Hi guys, welcome to the Thinking Crypto channel. I hope you're doing well. On this channel, we cover the crypto news and we interview many of the folks who are building and investing in the crypto asset class. Guys, hit that thumbs up button. Let's get to over 500 likes. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Guys, I want to talk about XRP and Ripple's timeline because there have been bumps in the road for Ripple. There have been delays, but I want to talk about where we're at, where have we come from, and where we're going because I think things are back on track given some recent regulatory clarity uh, and information we've gotten in the United States. But I want to break it down for you um, so you see what is taking place here because it's very big. Now, I am not an XRP maximalist and I am not a Bitcoin maximalist. I like to look at things holistically from a neutral standpoint, taking out emotions and feelings. I look at it from a business standpoint. Does it make sense? Is it solving a world, real world problem? Is there potential for it to get adoption? Or is there partnerships? Are people working with with them right so that's why xrp is the biggest holding in my portfolio at 26 percent but of course i'm bullish on bitcoin as well as the digital gold store of value currently at 14 percent and so on and so forth so i want to make sure that is clear now guys um real re quick for those of you who don't know ripple is introducing xrp as an instant settlement um a mechanism a solution for the banks and and central banks around the globe uh, uh, for cross-border payments because right now there's no interoperability money is moved in days instead of seconds and minutes right you have swift which is outdated uh, we can now send you know you and i send each other videos and photos and text and information in seconds but you can't do that with money why not right so this is where ripple is coming in as a disruptor bringing a um technologically advanced solution and in positioning XRP as that bridge asset, a neutral bridge asset, where the different currencies around the globe can be uh, interoperable. Because right now, in order to fund cross-border payments, there's dormant capital sitting in Nostro Vostro accounts around the globe. Now, how does Ripple position or bring this solution to the table? Who do they have to meet with? Who do they have to work with? Well, they have to work with the bank of international settlement they have to work with the imf because these are the folks who influence central banks and we know they are working with central banks as well ripple themselves but how do you get to the jp morgans and the bank of americas you have to go down that list right imf world bank bank of international settlements then you work with the central banks around the globe which influence the commercial banks in the respective regions so Let's establish something here that Ripple, it is confirmed by their employee, Sagar Sabai, since 2018, he said this at the Bank Bangkok FinTech Fair, that they are working with 40 to 50 central banks across the globe. Let me play it for you so you can hear it directly from the horse's mouth. I'm actually employed by Ripple because, uh, so we actually work very closely with about 40, 50 central banks across the globe, including Bank of Thailand. So... Pretty clear. We're working with 40 or 50 central banks around the globe, uh, including the uh, Bank of Thailand. So this is 2018, so I'm sure that number has increased. And then what we saw happening over the years since 2018, guys, this, this article here, this report by the Bank of International Settlements talks about cryptocurrencies and they mention Ripple and the fact that they're using a utility settlement coin. Very, very interesting, right? And of course, we know they're referencing XRP. That's the utility digital asset that Ripple leverages. And we've seen on the IMF's website, imf.org, you can go check this out. Since 2018, there have been presentations from the folks at Ripple. You can see here a presentation by Sagar Sabai, the guy I just uh, showed you in the video, from November 13th, 2018, talking about XRapid, which is now known as, um, of course, the, um, excuse me, Ripple ODL. So these presentations are accessible for you to go download and read them. And look, look at it right here. It looks like I doubled opened it. Um, here you got transferring transforming global payments, enabling the internet of value. This is essentially what Ripple put together to present to the folks at the IMF. That is why the IMF has it on their website. And of course, you can imagine this was shared with the different central banks around the globe. And of course, there's other reports here talking about XRP and Ripple and what they're trying to do, digital asset for payments. This is all public information and factual information that you can go pull up. But I, uh, once again, I want to emphasize the timeline. 2018, guys, right? So this is all on the website. Then what else did we see in 2018? Which was the smoking gun here, I think. Very clear indication of what Ripple is doing. 
Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, shares the stage with Ross Lacau of the IMF. So here, fireside chat with Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and IMF's Deputy General Counsel Ross Lacau in uh, talking about digital assets and crypto, blockchain, and so forth. And many of you know about the viral famous clip. Let me play it here for you guys so you can hear it. You want to take one? Go for it. The first one's for you. IMF. Do you see IMF holding crypto assets in the future? I did not put that up there. Remember, I'm from the legal department. I'm supposed to be very conservative about these things. Um, I, I don't want to go into great details about Maybe the Maybe I should take what the IMF yeah, is going to uh, do. So, guys, I think that was very telling, right? Brad's body language, the humor. He's like, you want to tell them what's about to happen? Because the IMF is working with Ripple. Most likely, they're going to be enforcing, or I shouldn't say enforce, but suggesting and pushing the central banks to use XRP for cross-border settlement in conjunction with holding possibly some XRP um, in, in some way. Uh, you know, I don't know the full details. But guys, I, I, want, I want to bring this up because I want you to think about this. Do you see CZ, Binance's CEO, working with the IMF? Do you see the Winklevoss twins working with the IMF? Do you see Brian uh, Armstrong of Coinbase working with the IMF? All the respective people we know, the big players in the market, do you see them sharing the stage with the IMF and working with them, guys? Right? Do you see the IMF having information about uh, uh, Coinbase and you know different companies and so forth on, on their website as they do with Ripple and XRP presentations from the company? food for thought i want you to think about that and and this is and this is facts i'm not making anything up it's pretty clear they have a working relationship and furthermore guys uh i'm going to show you some additional items here um let me jump ahead a little bit right you all have seen this and the majority of you brad garlinghouse in the same roof as uh, roof roof room as as christine lagarde and a bunch of people from the imf so this was shared by jess chang who uh of course worked at ripple at one point and then she went to the imf and now she's at the federal reserve board interesting and she posted this photo last year so this was 2019 and once again, I'm going to position this question, right? Ross Lacau is right here. Here's Brad. Um, pretty clear what's going on. They are in talks with the folks at the IMF and working closely with them, right? And then as a result, you know, after Brad spoke to, uh, well, I should say spoke to, but he had the conversation here at the Singapore FinTech Festival in 2018. He was interviewed later that, that year in December, right? And uh, by Breaker Mag, and he said banks will hold crypto in 2019. So Brad made a very bullish and bold statement here. That's that's something big because back then people were still saying, and this was last year, obviously, in um, early last year, where it, people are saying Bitcoin's a scam, this is the crypto market's a fad, blah, blah, blah. So he's saying these things, and unfortunately, it did not come to pass. So let's talk about why. And before I go further, in 2019, we saw the World Bank started talking a lot about Ripple and XRP and so forth on their website. So you have um, you have the Bank of International Settlement, you have the IMF, and you have the World Bank. So here, here's something. Solutions are being actively tested in the market. In 2018, Ripple, a fintech company, piloted XRapid, which is now Ripple ODL, which leverages XRP, a DLT-based cross-border payment solution along with a along the very competitive U.S. Mexico corridor. Financial institutions involved in the pilot saved 40 to 70 percent in foreign exchange costs. So it works. And the average payment times was just over two minutes, guys. The transfer of funds on XRapid took two to three seconds, with the most of the processing time explained by domestic payment rails and intermediary digital asset exchanges. So it takes a matter of minutes compared to days which SWIFT is doing. And this is the World Bank website, worldbank.org. Go check it out yourself, guys. I, I hope you're seeing what I'm establishing here and showing the facts that this thing is going to be really big. And once again, I'm not an XRP maximalist. I just look at things from a business standpoint and what is taking place around the world and what problems are being solved. Because you look at the Googles, you look at the Amazons, the Ebays, and what they did come in and disrupt a market, bring a better solution. And that made them 
you know, the 800 gorilla, pound gorillas in the room, the, these powerhouses, right? I mean, these household names. And I think Ripple is going to be uh, in, the, in the same category as a Google eventually, guys. And and we saw that the IMF increase, even in 2019, their, their conversation around digital assets and cryptocurrencies, right? Now, uh, we saw Christine Lagarde before she went to the EU Central Bank. Um, she was at there talking about different things around crypto and talking about disruptors. Let me play this for you. Facebook, what kind of threat does this pose to the traditional banking system? Well, I think it's, you have incumbents, the banks, commercial banks, and you have the disruptors. And clearly the disruptors are having an impact on the incumbents. We just heard a very large uh, systemic bank here saying that they're launching the digital coin, uh, currently piloted in a way uh, within the institutional clients, but to be scaled beyond that. We heard from the European Central Bank that they, are, uh, they have launched in November something that is called TIPS, that enables all the banks in the Eurozone to actually transfer so I don't think I need to go further, but even Christine Lagarde started pushing the use of uh, digital assets and so forth and talking about the disruptors getting into the market. Now, who? Are, once again, going back to who are they hanging out with and who are they meeting with? Brad from Ripple. I don't see anybody there from Coinbase. I don't see someone there from VeChain. I don't see anyone there from uh, representing Bitcoin, right? And once again, I'm not anti-Bitcoin. I've sh clearly shown my portfolio, but I'm showing you the facts here, laying the groundwork as, as to what's coming for us guys who are holding XRP. And big things are ahead because the, it, Brad and Ripple and these guys are rubbing shoulders with the people from the IMF. I mean, wow. What other facts do you need to see that they are working together, right? So once again, Brad made his prediction, but unfortunately it didn't come to pass. Well, why? Why did that happen? And and um, I'm going to show you some more clips here, but it's because we don't have the regulations in the U.S. I think Brad engaged with the IMF, the World Bank, the Bank of International Settlements, Ripple as a company, of course, did all this. But unfortunately, the folks in the U.S. who control the regulations dragged their feet. So let me play this clip here where he talks about CBDCs and how XRP uh, can still be leveraged because People, some people were putting the foot out there. Well, central banks are making CBDCs. XRP, not, don't, does, you don't need a bridge asset. You still need a bridge asset because they're different currencies. Let me play it for you. For payments problem. To be clear, we have not focused on the central bank digital currency issuance. Uh, our view is very much there needs to be interoperability globally. And even in a world of CBDCs, you still need interoperability to, to solve that problem. There you go. Even in the world of CBDCs, every central bank can launch their CBDCs. You still need interoperability, right? How do these different banks trust each other? How do you get the real-time settlement without having dormant capital sitting around globe, uh, you know, in bank accounts globally? And this was at the Swiss National Bank Conference. And of course, Christine Lagarde and a whole bunch of other central bankers were there. So guys, I hope you see what's happening here and why I'm so bullish on XRP. Once again, um, and, and the photos shared here with Brad uh, hanging out with those folks. So let's move ahead, guys, because what happened in Davos this year, World Economic Forum? Brad called out Steve Mnuchin. Steve Mnuchin was there and all the world leaders, everybody, he tweeted at him saying, Steve Mnuchin at the World Economic 2020, of course, when asked about cryptocurrencies, here's what he said. There are benefits to cross-border payments in lowering costs for consumers and businesses. We absolutely support companies working on this. Well, who's working on cross-border payments, guys? Who's trying to solve that problem? Ripple, pretty clear, right? I think it's pretty obvious what's going on here. But what did Brad say? Critical to apply this pragmatism to the U.S. regulation. So don't give me nice stories and say, oh, yeah, this company's doing great things here. Pass the regulations, mofo. Get it going. And Mnuchin, I believe, was the linchpin. He was the one that's slowing everything down. And look, he could have been obviously waiting for Trump to maybe give it a go ahead. But I think it's from him. I think he's the one. That's why Brad called him out directly. And then what did we see at Davos, guys? This this was pretty revealing. This was like the nail here in the coffin for Swift, I believe. Um, because 
The World Economic Forum put out Central Bank Digital Currency Policy Toolmaker. So, hey, central banks, start building it. Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution dated January 2020. So when I search for XRP in this document, many of you have seen it. Most relevant for wholesale CBDC. Examples, JPM coin, XRP. And, and the subheader here is crypto assets designed for inter or intrabank payments and settlements. That's big. Payments and settlements. Instant settlement is what they are bringing to the table in a, a very transparent cost effective and speed right that's so important in today's digital world so this here was i mean pretty groundbreaking that xrp is mentioned directly that asset is mentioned directly in conjunction with most relevant for cbdc's because as brad said in the video don't matter how many cbdc's you create you still have the interoperability problem right so let's let's keep going because brad continued to vent his frustration in 2020 you know, the World Economic Forum took place in January 2020, right? Pretty clear. When he tweeted this January, come February, nothing. Come March, nothing. April, nothing. May, nothing. Brad keeps putting out, you know, these tweets. U.S. regulators, now is the time to step up and lean into digital currency, et cetera, et cetera. Highlighting that China is moving ahead. And nothing, guys, nothing, right? He keeps He keeps beating the drum here. Um, he references um, in June, just June, Greer sums it up perfectly. The private sector is doing its part. It's, it is the incumbent, it is incumbent on the U.S. policymakers to do theirs. There's an entire industry ready to expand American innovation. We just need to know the rules. Again, he keeps saying, where the hell is the regulations, right? Ripple's hands are being tied because they are a U.S.-based company. Yes, they have a global presence, but let's be real here. The biggest banks, the biggest capital markets is in the U.S. And I'm sure he probably wants to get going with the banks, you know, Santander and Bank of America and all that, right? But they can't do it. Banks don't want to touch it. Banks are not going to touch an asset that does not have regulatory clarity around it. But then a big move took place. Um, even though it happened in May, it took it took a while. Brian Brooks the, will become right. He became the acting co controller of currency, the OCC. But who made this move? Who asked them to come there? The Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, the same guy Brad was calling out. Like, dude, dude, where is the regulation? Let's go, right? He got Brian Brooks on board, probably because he's like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but let me get a guy who knows crypto, who worked at Coinbase, right? And then what did we see in July, just a couple of weeks ago, guys? Federally chartered banks and thrifts may provide custody services for crypto assets. And Brad's, look at Brad's reaction. Very similar to his reaction and sentiment and feelings that he had when he was talking with Ross LaCloy, right? Very happy, very jovial, like, yeah, you want to tell him what's about to happen next? Now, he made, you know, he was he was feeling that way. He made his prediction in 2018, but the U.S. government kind of screwed him where they didn't move as fast as things were supposed to go. But eventually, we got the tip of the iceberg move here, and banks can now custody crypto assets. So, who is Ripple working with again? Oh, yeah, you know, the people who work with the central banks and, and the global banks and all that, right? <laughs> and the commercial banks. Yeah, the Bank of International Settlement, uh, the IMF, <laughs> and, uh, of course, you know, the World Bank. So do you guys see what, what, what happened here in this timeline? Very bullish. We got sidetracked by a year, obviously, based on Brad's uh, prediction. And I think his sentiments here, his tweet, um, now is, it shows that Ripple's back on track and I believe there's more regulations coming because we saw Stuart Alt Alteroy, who's the general uh, counsel at Ripple, was also very bullish on this news. So let me just read it here from Brad. Boom. Today's ruling is a huge step forward. The OCC is absolutely leading the way to foster innovation, protect consumers and provide a level playing field for all. The future has never been fiat versus crypto. These can and should coexist in harmony. So very happy, bullish tweet here, right? I, I And once again, if this wasn't significant for Ripple, he wouldn't tweet about it. He wouldn't say anything. He would be like, whatever, like keep beating your drum. Like, where's my regulation, Steve Mnuchin? But 
this is the start. And I believe this was a big green light for XRP. I did a video when we heard that news saying Ripple XRP is essentially the biggest winner from that news, right? You guys saw that video. And I, I believe that 100%. And I believe, once again, this is just the start of the regulations here, but it's a big move because Ripple works with the banks. They need the banks and, and you need the regulatory clarity for the banks to say, okay, we're going to hold XRP for our cross border payments, right? They that's what they need. And there, I believe there's more coming, guys. And uh, this is bullish. I hope you see it here. I shared facts with you, I shared timelines going back since 2018, and it's all facts. It's all on the IMF website, the BIS website, the World Bank's website. I mean, it's pretty clear. And you look at the photos of who Brad is sharing the stage with and who he, he's rubbing shoulders with, it's pretty clear what's coming. And that is why, if you've ever wondered, oh, Tony, why are you holding that banker coin XRP? This is why, because it's about to be a game changer. It is about to disrupt a trillion dollar problem, a global problem. And it's going to, you know, they're going to be working with central banks, commercial banks around the globe. I hope you guys see it. I don't know how else I could have uh, explained it, but maybe I missed something. So guys, leave a comment below, thumbs up th this video. Please share this video if you think someone could learn something about what Ripple is doing in XRP and the big opportunity that that's before us. Thank you guys for listening. Please share the video, and I'll talk to you all later.